Hello, my name is Scott Drew, and as Dean of the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan, I am honored to be joined today by Malcolm Gladwell. As the Dean of a business school in a broader university uh, that uh, was founded in many ways on the mission of an, an uncommon education for the common person. The fate and the trends in higher education is something that uh, I think about deeply and care about deeply. And so when you look at the world of higher education, whether it's in the United States, globally or otherwise, what trends excite you the most and what trends scare you the most? Uh, well, the ones that scare me are the ones that scare most people, which is cost. The fact that uh, uh, students are incurring these extraordinary debts, that the cost of higher ed is scaring some students away, and also the fact that institutions themselves seem to be trapped on these treadmills of spending and trying to keep up with each other and provide ever more elaborate amenities and so that's one part of it that is quite destructive. Um, a friend of mine who went to Stanford in the 80s reminded me that when she was there, her dorm, there was a whole series of dorms that were um, those kind of makeshift, uh, what do you call them? Uh, it was like a shanty town sure. in the middle of campus. Stanford was not always this fancy gold-plated place. Now. Was the quality of education at Stanford in the 1980s as great as it is today? Absolutely. They had brilliant professors, they had brilliant students. But back then, you could put students in what was essentially a trailer park on campus, and we were fine with it. Now we feel we have to build them Ritz-Carlton's. Um, that's a problem that we have to kind of solve. Uh, what excites me is what technology could do to kind of allow us to reach uh, people in places that are now hard to reach, but more than that, that allow us to tailor curriculum to students mm. um, in a way that makes it more contagious and more exciting. And so that, I mean, when you think about the, the possibility of truly great teachers to be able to reach tenfold, hundredfold more students than they do now, that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, and if we can make that happen, I think we'll be better off. Yeah, we've, we've got a finance faculty here on campus, Gautam Call, who has the world's most subscribed to finance course online. Over a million people have taken it. Wow. And it's so exciting to see the dispersion and distribution of countries of students where they're coming from. Uh, and that, that, I agree, is, is yeah. particularly exciting. If you were made president of a university uh, in the United States uh, later this afternoon, uh, <laughs> what would you do? Wow, later this afternoon is very exciting. <laughs> well, I'd run out and get some suits I have to dress up. Um, but, uh, I would, uh, the first thing I would do is try and have meaningful discussions with uh, faculty and administration about costs. But is there a way to rein in the kind of inflation that uh, higher ed has seen in recent years? Um, the second thing is I would talk about start to have conversations about scale. Is there a way, without compromising the quality of the education at the institution, to reach more students? Because I believe that when you can make that scale argument, you become far more attractive. You make the university far more attractive to donors. When I say donors, I mean not just private donors, but also public donors. That if you said, we have a way to make University of Michigan relevant, not just to the I don't know how many, what do you have, uh, uh, 25,000 undergrads, roughly? Mm -hmm. If you could say, we think we can use technology to reach another 20,000 somehow, and then went to Lansing. Did I get that right? You I did. think I did. You did. Went to Lansing with that argument. Maybe that's a better argument. Mm -hmm. Maybe that says, that makes them say, you know what? We know we have been neglecting the, what we've been giving the University of Michigan over the last generation. Now we're convinced this is a time for us to pony up. And maybe if you start going out into the public sector as well, that's a better argument than we think we can build a fancy building and put your name on it. Yeah. There must be better ways for universities to make the case that they require more resources. Because that's really the end of the day. Let's face it, if I was president of this university, 75% of my job is trying to find extra resources, mm -hmm. right? Necessarily. 
Um, and I would like to find, see if I could come up with better arguments, stronger, more unusual arguments to make to people who, can, who are in the position to give me more resources. Right.